Hi, how are you going? It's Friday afternoon here and coming to you live. It's been a couple of weeks since I've been able to do that. Um, the last couple of weeks I'd had um, some wisdom teeth out and was not feeling very much up to coming live to you on camera. So I am really excited that I'm able to do this this afternoon. And I wanted to chat to you a little bit today about celebration. Um, some of you might have seen, I put up a post this morning, which was um, asking us to think about, you know, what do you celebrate and how, you know, how you can celebrate even the smallest things. So in continuing on that theme, I was actually this afternoon just finishing off um, the uh, last sort of couple of chapters of book, the book that I've been writing. And the focus at the end of um, my book is actually about celebration, about celebration, about confidence and um, what you can do with that um, confidence and how you might celebrate this um, phase of acceptance and understanding um, having been through and having learnt a lot on an autism journey. So that kind of, um, yeah, really resonated for me to kind of be thinking about celebration Celebration and how people um, celebrate, whether they celebrate quietly, whether they celebrate, um, whether they don't feel like they've got permission to celebrate or not. Um, but that's something that I find um, I think is really important um, and I'm really uh, thrilled to see a lot more, um, I suppose, awareness and just um, moments of celebration, whether it's on social media or whether it's in sharing news and things like that. Um, and in and in line with that, this morning we had um, the final group and parent get together for our Westmead Feelings program. And so that was again um, a milestone and um, reason for celebration because um, these families have been through three modules over three terms, um, even with a, um, a summer holiday break in between. And so that's been a long process of, of coming to the end of these modules. And same for the kids. So the kids have been turning up each week um, to work on their emotions and learning new skills, um, going away and having conversations and implementing them in between. So it was absolutely an appropriate and wonderful occasion to celebrate uh, that, that journey and the conclusion of their, their program. And it was really wonderful to be able to, to talk with the families that have been supporting the kids and um, celebrate with them, you know, their, um, you know, things that they've learned and gleaned over the time and um, what an important um, opportunity is to take some time to reflect and to um, have celebrations like that and to really um, make it um, important and landmark them. So sometimes we can just be so busy in the process of doing and the process of attending and the process of kind of work, 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 that stopping and taking time um, to to celebrate. And again, it doesn't have to be in maybe traditional ways of cake and balloons and um, party poppers and things like that. Celebrations can be all forms and shapes. And so what that celebration looks like to you and to your family and how you might do that um, can vary widely. For me, when I think about a celebration, yes, there's the kind of people coming together and kind of um, all joining in and celebrating together, but also a celebration can be a lot smaller and more intimate. Um, it can just be taking that time to do something special for you or your family and, and really um, taking a time to reflect upon the work and the journey that's happened. So I think celebrations and um, finding ways to kind of acknowledge uh, progress, acknowledge uh, spaces for reflection is can be a bit overlooked sometimes, but I think that's really, really important. So um, I think, and again, when we run groups, um, creating a celebration is probably easier in some ways because there's kind of an end point where we can kind of go, we've come to the end of the group, um, look at how much we've covered, look at how much we've learned and enjoyed and, and everything. And there's kind of like an end point where you can stop and kind of reflect and then 
then you can go and let's have a celebration for that. Let's acknowledge that that hard work. Let's acknowledge um, the joy that we've kind of had with that learning. I think in terms of you know life journeys and life stories and things, sometimes it can be harder to have that moment in time to stop and reflect. And hence why I suppose we often um, celebrate um, moments in time, whether it's earmarked by a certain day or an anniversary or a birth date or um, you know, some kind of special external kind of date and time that has been given to us. So we go, okay, we have to celebrate Mother's Day, Father's Day, birthdays, whatever. And then we kind of feel like we have permission to celebrate. And I suppose what I'm saying is that we don't have to have these external things in place to give ourselves permission to find those moments to celebrate and celebrate um, achievements that might be goals that you've developed or you've um, had in your mind or you've talked about or worked on with your family or your children, no matter what it is. And so setting that up so there is a celebration um, point but it looked in there, you know, and and sometimes it's just finding small things to celebrate and we're not needing to have um, massive gains made to give yourself permission to do that. So that's why even things like looking at today and going, well, what can we celebrate and, and choosing to find things, it can put us into a space of gratitude and it can bring a um, nice sense of joy as well that we can find things to celebrate and things to look forward to and they don't have to be massive things at all. So yeah, in, on that note, I hope that um, thinking about celebration, thinking about how you can, if you've been working on things with your children, um, especially kids who are doing um, lots of therapy and um, things like that, finding ways to build in celebration points. And, and for you as a parent, if you're the one who is supporting them on that journey, um, how can you build in some celebration points as well? Or just give yourself permission to say, I'm going to celebrate, celebrate all the hard work that has happened, celebrate um, my own growth, celebrate um, the, the confidence that's growing, um, that comes with learning and understanding about something. And, and you don't have to have um, permission from anybody else to do that. But it is a nice reminder. I know I need reminders as well sometimes. So um, this is your reminder to um, celebrate something today. Um, it doesn't matter how big or how small that celebration is you might want to share it with one person you might want to do it in a much more public forum any um, and all is okay but I think finding ways to create celebrations especially with lots of stresses and things and I know that that continues for, for especially the rest of Victoria um, and you know regional Victoria as well in light of you know different COVID things that have happened this past week um, that's not to diminish just diminish our stresses that are around us it's we we acknowledge that, that there and that plays a toll um, on our health and well-being um, but it's also a, a space and time for you to choose to to find different things to celebrate because they're always there if we're looking for them so I hope you can do that this Friday afternoon and I will happily chat with you next week talk to you soon bye bye